Lamella keratoplasty has evolved over the last 150 years. However, its utility as an optical procedure has been limited by problems of interface irregularity, scarring and residual pathological stroma. Deep lamellar keratoplasty or DLKP is an exciting new surgery leading a paradigm shift in the management of a variety of corneal disorders. Corneal ectasias, corneal dystrophies and stromal scars all have pathology involving the anterior layers of the cornea with a normal or a relatively healthy endothelial layer. Penetrating keratoplasty, the traditional surgical modality of replacing a circular button of full thickness cornea with a donor button of similar size needlessly sacrifices healthy endothelium. Deep lamellar keratoplasty, on the other hand, involves replacement of corneal tissue anterior to the Desmase membrane. As it preserves the host endothelium, taking only the stroma and epithelium from the donor, this procedure eliminates the possibility of endothelial rejection. The other advantages are that it significantly reduces the duration of post-op care and allows early suture removal, thereby minimizing steroid-related and suture-related problems. DLKP also facilitates a smooth interface at the level of the Desmase membrane and a structurally stronger, non-penetrating wound. The big bubble technique, popularized by Anwar and Teichmann, is the simplest and most easily reproducible of techniques, consistently allowing one to reach the Desmase membrane. In this video, we describe a simplified modification of the big bubble and open dissection techniques of DLKP using routine instruments available in a penetrating keratoplasty tray. First, partial thickness trephination of the cornea is performed followed by injection of air into the corneal stroma at 80% depth using a 30 gauge needle. Here, a large bubble of air collects separating the Desmase membrane from the stroma. The edge of this separation is visualized as a well demarcated dense white ring, the big bubble. As can be seen in this video, partial thickness trephination is achieved using a simple trephine. If the groove is not deep enough, it can be manually deepened. A 30 gauge needle bent 5 mm from its tip and angulated at 60 degrees is attached to an air filled syringe inserted beveled down into the corneal stroma at a chosen site deep in the trephination groove. A drop of viscoelastic can be placed on the surface to facilitate a magnified view of the needle tip. The bevel of the tip facing down is important to decrease the risk of penetrating Desmase membrane and to facilitate posterior spread of air. When the initial infiltration is accomplished in the central corneal disc, air suddenly forms a large bubble with a circular outline between the Desmase membrane and the deepest stroma. This is the desired endpoint. At this stage, it is vital to make a paracentesis at a site peripheral to the bubble to decompress the anterior chamber and reduce the chance of Desmase rupture during dissection. A partial thickness anterior keratectomy is then performed leaving a layer of corneal stroma anterior to the air bubble. After the keratectomy is completed, some intraocular fluid is drained through the paracentesis. In the classic unverse big bubble technique, the bubble is punctured with a sharp blade in the center of the cornea. Any sudden darkening of the dish-shaped opacity would indicate that the big air bubble has collapsed. At this point, the eye may be softened further by draining more fluid from the paracentesis. An iris spatula is inserted through the tiny opening made by the sharp-tipped knife. The spatula is carefully advanced in the cleavage plane created by air until its tip approaches the trephination groove. Although the spatula is in direct contact with the decimase membrane, the risk of perforation is minimal as it is blunt and passes easily in the potential space enlarged by the bubble. The spatula 
is held steadily and firmly while it is gently lifted anteriorly, slightly tenting the residual stromal layers. The layers are incised by scraping with a sharp knife held parallel to the spatula. When one or more cuts into the remaining stroma are completed, the deepest stromal layers are circularly excised with a blunt tipped micro scissors. In our modification, we use routine corneal scissors to create a spiral track of lamellar dissection along the edge of the trefine mark with periodic trimming of the stromal tissue till the predesmets plane has been entered. Once the desired plane is entered, the stroma can be gently tented up with forceps and cut along the trefine mark using blunt tipped corneal scissors. Preparation of the donor button involves trephination of the button, oversizing by about 0.5 millimeters. The donor button's desmes and endothelium are then stripped using non-tooth forceps. This usually peels off smoothly as one layer. Both host and donor beds are thoroughly washed to prevent any debris. The button is then sutured with interrupted or continuous sutures. Post-operatively, the patients are put on topical steroids and antibiotic drops. Rapid tapering of steroids and topographic guided early suture removal facilitates early visual rehabilitation of these patients with good optical outcomes and minimal adverse events. In conclusion, the modified big bubble technique is an easy reproducible and inexpensive technique requiring no special instrumentation that can be used for selective replacement of corneal stroma. The technique has several advantages over penetrating keratoplasty and other techniques of deep lamellar keratoplasty and should be the preferred surgical procedure for the management of stromal corneal disorders needing a transplant. <laughs>